Does the cost of common commander staples got you down? We've got solutions for you coming up. What's cooking everyone? Welcome to another episode of Nights at the Kitchen Table. I'm your host Cal and today I'm joined by my lovely co-host and my wife, Aria. Hi. <laughs> I was tempted to say that she was the newest member of our Nights at the Kitchen Table team, but she's actually been with us from the beginning. It's true. She's been from the other side of the camera, helping to direct us and make us not look as goofy as we actually are in real life. Making sure the uh, pictures and stuff behind like line up with the video frame, so that satisfies you, that was my job, so and thank if you. if it doesn't, blame Maria. Mm, don't do that. No, <laughs> don't do that. She's also of knowledge on um, playing budget and replacing some of those expensive staples with some alternatives. So she's going to drop some knowledge. It's true, because i got to spend that money on shoes and not cards. <laughs> <laughs> so the format is going to be as follows. We'll introduce our, bu our staple card, followed by our budget replacement, and then we'll offer some pros, cons analysis. Yep. All right, so we're going to start off here with the popular and infamous Smothering Tithe. Oh, that sounds familiar. Right now, the cheapest version comes in at $40.57. Oh. But we've got a budget replacement for you that only costs $3.19 in monologue tax. Nice. This first showed up in the Strixhaven Commander decks. It's three mana, two, and a white. And it's an enchantment. And it reads, whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, you create a treasure token. Hey, I like treasure tokens. Everyone likes treasure tokens. They get you more mana. <laughs> so definitely some pros here is that the opponents do not have the option to pay the two mana. It just happens. Regardless, which is, I mean, super nice because then you avoid that super annoying, do you want to pay two mana? <laughs> Would you like to pay two mana? Would you like to pay two mana for me Do you like that question, to... Aria? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's my all-time favorite question. I've I think that's asked. why people remove Smothering Tithe. As, off, as quickly as they do? Is I just sick of that Rhystic study question? Oh, I'm absolutely. Hesitant. Yeah. Because, I mean, if I'm playing a card that says draw X amount of cards, then every single time I draw a card, Callum's over here like, do you want to pay two mana? I'm like, no. <laughs> How about now? No. How about now? No. What if I ask you nicely? Go ask your mother. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we play monologue tax instead. <laughs> yes. And it also costs less mana. It comes in at three mana instead of the regular four for a smothering tithe. Saves you some money, especially in money. Mana, especially in white, when it's harder to come by anyway. Definitely. So. However, being a budget card, it does offer some cons. Unfortunately. Being, first off, that it only triggers a maximum of one time each turn. Because on turn. it's whenever your opponent casts their second spell. So Definitely. And they can only cast their second spell once. once. Yeah, I don't really <laughs> so know how you could replace a second twice. Unless, of course, they're like taking extra turns or something. Oh, I guess it's so. true, but that would still be like each turn. If you're turn. playing against like a Narset deck, then maybe Monologue Tires would be way better than Smothering Tithe. But that maybe. probably means you're also dying, so. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not actually helpful. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, unfortunately, because it only triggers once on each opponent's turn, you max out at getting three treasures per turn rotation. Yeah, which isn't as great as Smothering Tithe where you could get more than ten per yeah. one turn, you know. So, so it's definitely like the uh, the pulled back version. They put they push mm -hmm. the brakes on the monologue tax here. Yeah, it's a little pumping those brakes. So, and then people typically draw more cards than they play cards. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, very rarely is every player at the table top decking. If that's the case, then they're probably not playing enough draw spells. So, but most people have more cards in hand than they have played during the games, meaning that Smothering Tithe will trigger more than monologue tax, which is probably why it's a better card. So, admittedly, it's not definitely not Smothering Tithe, but it's I believe it's probably worth that $3 price tag. Oh, so, yeah. So, give it a whirl yep. if you're looking for this kind of effect. Definitely helps you. Um, our next one is going to be Herb Borg, Tomb of Yogmoth. I've been trying to pronounce this all day and just <laughs> cannot, so that's why I said it really slow. Um, this card comes in at $33.07, but we're going to give you a comparison to Blanket of Night, which is only $0.84, cents. so less than a dollar, which is $32 cheaper than the other one. Um, Blanket Night is a three-man enchantment, one and two blacks, and it says that each mana-producing land is a swamp, in addition to its normal type. All right, so pros. It's cheaper. It costs less. That's, it's it's a lot less. <laughs> yeah, pros <it laughs> has more, it costs less, but unfortunately <laughs> that's probably the only upside to Blanket of Night. Urborg is uh, 
strictly better. better. Card. Yeah. So. Enchantments are easier to get rid of. You actually Land. have to pay for mm -hmm. them to play them. And, yep, it's not going to touch your mana producing land. Yeah, so if you have any lands in your battlefield, it's like only like, going a, to touch, sorry. like a Maze of Ith, it's not going to grant Maze of Ith the ability to tap for mana, like Urborg would. So, yeah. I mean, those are pretty, you don't see those very often, but that that is a corner case that will arise. Mm -hmm. So Also, another note we wanted to add is that Blank of Night will still work with the Cabal Coffers. But if you're looking for your budget alternative for Cabal Coffers, bonus content, <laughs> you can play Cabal Stronghold. However, Urborg will work with Cabal Stronghold, Blank of Night will not, because it only counts basic swamps. So keep that in mind if you're trying to run your deck on a budget. Absolutely. That's going to bring us to our next option here. We have Doubling Season. This card sees a ton of play. And because of that, the cheapest version comes in at $77.67. cents. Do you have any chicken nuggets? That is I could buy with that. A ton of chicken nuggets. So we'll do some math nuggets. and throw up a total here on the screen for you. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a couple budget options here for you. Two of the, them, actually. The effect that we're actually trying to replicate here is the counter doubling effect. You can find ways to double tokens on a plethora of cards. Mm -hmm. and those still are pretty expensive. I think Adrix and Never are probably the cheapest version right now off the top of my head. <laughs> but trying to replicate that counter doubling ability is what we're looking for. And we have two options here for you. One in a 59 cent card in plain wide celebration. And then we have Deep Glow Skate for $2.57. So plain wide celebration. It is a seven mana green sorcery. It's five and two green. And it says choose four. You may choose the same mode more than once. Super nice. The mode we're looking for is the third one down in Proliferate. So it allows you to proliferate four times. Mm -hmm. And then Deep Glow Skate, it's a five mana creature, four and a blue. And it reads when Deep Glow Skate enters the battlefield, double the number of each kind of counter on any number of target permanents. And it's a 3-3. Three, three. Any number of target permanents. Yeah, it's not just your creatures. It can be your planeswalkers. It can be your lands. It can be target opponents' infect counters. Yeah, so if you're putting infect counters, minus one, minus one counters on people's creatures, that'll double double the number of those as well. <laughs> so it could Evil. Essentially, I mean, if you're playing infect, it could probably board wipe <laughs> a lot of people. Decent creatures. amount of people. So the, the effect we're looking for mainly is like in Super Friends or Planeswalker decks. Oh, yeah, so. because, I mean, your Planeswalkers are generally pretty close to ultimating if you double their counters or, you know... Proliferating four times. Quadruple. That's, not quadrupling, but yeah, proliferating four times. That's going to get you at ultimate range, and if not, you're going to get super close. But you yeah. can definitely design your deck around Planeswalkers that will ult if you proliferate them four times. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So... Um, another benefit to the Plain Wild Celebration and Deep Glow Skate ahead of doubling season is the play the play pattern that they encourage you to use. They want you to play your Planeswalkers first, so play your, play your actual game plan, and then cast them to mm -hmm. win the game with ultimating your Planeswalkers. Doubling season wants you to play doubling season first and then deploy the Planeswalkers, which, which isn't as effective. Isn't as effective because, first of all, you only get one doubling season, so mm -hmm. the chances of you drawing it are 1 in 100. Not super great, and it kind of hinders your gameplay until you can get that card out. Whereas with these, you just play like normal, and then you draw this, hey, bonus, everything's bigger. Great, thanks. And it's helpful yep. that way. And you're off to ultimating Planeswalkers and winning the game. Oh, yeah. So so a couple cons, cons here, though, is they don't combine the two abilities of doubling counters and tokens. True, unfortunately. So if you're looking for doubling tokens and counters in the same deck you'll probably have to look for doubling season or be okay with splitting up that ability between card slots mm -hmm. so unfortunately, which is probably still cheaper than buying doubling season <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. i mean doubling season is purely the... at monetary benefits that's definitely the way to go with that yeah so if you're looking for doubling counters and not tokens deep definitely ghost gate and plain wild celebration are the way to go mm-hmm all right, that's going to lead us into our next cards. We've got Sword of Feast and Famine. This is a $61.70 card. Artifact equipment, we all know what it does. But here is our budget alternative. For only $5.55, you can get a Bear Umbra. 
This is a four mana enchantment, two generic, two green. This will enchant creature. Your enchanted creature is gonna get plus two, plus two, and has a nice ability of whenever this creature attacks, untap all lands you control. It also has an extra ability of totem armor, which I didn't know what that was until I saw this card. And it is actually says that if enchanted creature would be destroyed, instead remove all damage from it and just destroy this aura. So the ability we're trying to replicate here is the untapping of lands. Yep. So we like doing that. Yeah, that's 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 why sort of feast and famine is expensive as it is. Mm -hmm. However, bear umber has a different wording in its text here. It's true. Sword of feast and famine. Sword of feast and famine triggers when you deal combat damage. Bear Umbra triggers on the declare attackers. So that allows an entire combat step worth of mana to be casting any kind of combat tricks or instant speed spells during combat. Which saves you a ton because you can just play your creature or whatever and then add this onto it and then play a bunch of instants and stuff after you you've untapped lands. all of your land. So all of a sudden you're starting your turn over during your combat phase. While Sword and Feast of Famine makes you start your turn again in your second main phase. Yep. So it gives you a whole phase for Bear Armor to give you a little extra opportunity to play those spells. Mm -hmm. So, and then the, it actually is cheaper. It is cheaper, wise. yeah, absolutely. Because with Sword of Feast and Famine, you pay three to get it onto your board, but then you have to pay an extra two for some creature to come and pick up this sword off the ground. With Bear Umbra, you just turn your creature into some bear, brother bear situation <laughs> going on there, right? And it only costs you four mana. So you're saving one mana, which, I mean, when you're untapping all your lands, it's not a huge deal at that point. And it is green, so it's not like you're really hurting for mana at that point. <laughs> Definitely. But it is still cheaper to play, so you can play it a little bit faster. Um, for sure, oh, sorry. And then it also has total armor, so if your creature gets removed, it will protect it. Mm -hmm. So Totally prevents it from being dead dead however that is one of the cons of bear umbra is that yes. it is an aura enchantment which means that... it's way easier to get rid of than an equipment because equipments mm -hmm. usually have to say destroy target artifact and not destroy target creature or yeah. if someone or nukes the creature damage. holding the sword the sword sticks around mm -hmm. with bear umbra your creature will actually stick around because of totem armor but only for one more death essentially they just mm -hmm. get one more chance yeah Mm -hmm. So that is unfortunate, and it doesn't offer any protection from black and green. Nope. Which it's, is unfortunate. That is an upside on Sword of Peace and Famine, but we really are looking for that untapping untap more. Yep, more than anything is we want to untap everything. In that same vein, you don't force an opponent to discard a card either, but again, we're just looking for that untap land ability. Mm -hmm. So it has less abilities, but it's way cheaper and... Which it wasn't at one point. Just a really? few months ago, it was over $16 for Bear Umbra. But a recent reprint, praise Asmore, <laughs> in the Kamigawa uh, Commander decks brought it back down to where it's sitting at right now at $5. So if this is an effect you're looking for, right now is the time to pick it up. Oh, absolutely. Cause Not financial advice, this is gonna go. but <laughs> it could probably only go up from here. Mm -hmm. All right, that's going to take us to our next cards here. Our Commander staple being Gamble. So that's our, our mono red tutor, one of the only ones we offer. And right now that is coming at $18.36. That's what's gonna cost you to tutor in mono red. Yikes. However, we have an alternative for oh. only 15 cents for nickel and a dime in fervent mastery. And it is also a mono red sorcery. It, can, it costs three and two red, but it has an alternate cost. It reads, you may pay it two and two red rather than pay this spell's mana cost. If the two and two red cost was paid, an opponent discards any number of cards, then draws that many cards. Search your library for up to three cards, put them into your hand, shuffle, then discard three cards at random. Random. Yeah, that, that hurts. But there are some significant pros here. Let's go over those really fast. Oh, absolutely. So, number one pro. It gives you three cards instead of just one. It's like three gambles stapled into one 15 cent card absolutely so i mean that's helpful i can tutor up like <laughs> full-on two three card combos on its own oh absolutely and most win cons are two three card combos so you just automatically drew your win con saves you some time granted if you don't 
discard them. Yeah, as Clash long as you don't fingers. discard them on accident, that would be bad. So, that would be really sad. It's the most mono red thing ever. So, oh, if you're absolutely. a mono red player and you love the randomness of the way that color plays, this card is right up your alley. Mm-hmm. So, it also gives you the option to have an opponent wheel, which isn't a bad thing. No, politicking. Any card that like facilitates conversation between players offers an option to leverage deals. Bribery. The, these can be really good cards in Commander. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, typically, there's so there's four players at the table usually, in the yeah. usual game of Commander. Mm-hmm. Right? And most of the time, probably at least 75% of the time, you are not the player in the lead. No. Nah. So, Fervent Mastery can al- is just one more effect that allows you to get in cahoots with another player who is also not in the lead to bring down that number one player. Mm-hmm. So. So it's basically just, hey, if I give you this, will you not attack me and attack Cal instead because he's going to win <laughs> next turn? That's usually how politi- politicking deals go at our kitchen table. <laughs> it's just, hey, do you want to team up with me against Cal? That's that's essentially how our mm-hmm. games work. Yep. So And that'll allow you to, to shave off a man on this cost. So, or you could also target a player that only has a couple cards in hand that you know they want to keep. Or is top decking. Yeah, or is top decking. They don't even have cards. Mm-hmm. So, and it also know it is a may ability. So the opponent does not have to take the deal. The deal. The uh, the, the 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 wheel. <laughs> the deal <laughs> <laughs> so so it allows you, allows you a lot of flexibility with that. So I don't I don't see that as a downside. Allow oh, the no. opponent to discard those cards and draw that many. That's a great mm-hmm. way to leverage some more benefit here in Commander. Mm-hmm. So and then. Unfortunately, we do have some cons, which are pretty apparent. Yeah, they're pretty obvious. Number one is it costs four times more than Gamble. Sometimes Mana five. Mana-wise. Sometimes five, depending on how much you want to politic. <laughs> so, and you also discard those three cards. Yeah, so that's definitely a huge risk because I don't like running the risk of losing my cards that I just played. That's- but... If you want to cheat a little bit, you get your you tutor for your best card, and then tutor for two lands. Yeah, two fodder cards, cards. Something to buffer against that discard that's about to come. Yep, so because no matter how many cards you draw, because it does say up to three cards, mm-hmm. so no matter how many cards you draw, you do have to discard three, which, I mean, so why wouldn't you draw three to boost your chances of keeping those cards that you just tutored. Yeah, if you can think of a situation where you would only tutor up one card rather than the three, let us know in the comments. Could you be interested in knowing that situation? Yeah. <laughs> where would that be helpful? So I would like to know because I don't see a way that would be yeah. helpful. So despite all that, I feel like Fervent Mastery is a great replacement to Gamble. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. Just make sure you don't play this when you've only got, when you don't have very many cards in hand. Because <laughs> you will be discarding the card you just tutored for. Mm-hmm. Next up, we've got Tooth and Nail coming in at $26.19. Um, and it's budget counterpart, Shared Summons, coming in at $2.23. Shared Summons is a five mana card, three generic, two green. And it's an instant that says search your, your library for up to two creature cards with different names, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Now, if you're playing Commander, all of your cards are going to have different names, so kind of redundant, but if you're playing, you know, standard 60 card, obviously you're going to need that clarification. Yep, right? so it just allows you to tutor up the two best creatures in your deck, bring them right to your hand. So, some of the pros here, it costs four less mana than Tooth and Nail does. It's a lot less mana. No one's casting Tooth and Nail without the entwine cost, so essentially that mana value is nine for all intents and purposes, mm-hmm. and Shared Summons gives you a four mana discount, bringing it down to five. Mm-hmm. So it can also be played at instant speed. Yes. I think that's the super crucial part. Super helpful. So it doesn't, I mean, the major downside between Tooth and Nail and Shared Summons is it doesn't put it directly on the battlefield. Yep, but you're playing a green card. Well, if you're playing green, you're going to have a lot more mana than you need, generally speaking, at least from experience. <laughs> I've never run out of mana playing a green commander deck. So Yeah. And the instant speed really is what makes the difference here. Mm-hmm. So the play pattern this really encourages is that if, if Arya's got the shared summons, Boom. she waits until my end step, Boom. casts shared summons, right there. tutors up those two creatures to a hand, Boom. untats her turn, first main phase, <laughs> drops those two creatures. Boom. So it, it requires a little different play pattern than Tooth and Nail does, but essentially will grant you the same thing. Oh, yeah. I would never recommend um, casting shared summons 
getting your two creatures and then just passing. Oh, no way. That's going to no allow way to full that. turn rotation of people to target you. Mm-hmm. Count, they'll be prepared to counter your spells, remove your creatures when they enter the battlefield, It's or just kill you before you untap. Yeah, which would be really unfortunate to, you know, draw... Well, pull these two amazing cards, get ready to play them, and then someone's like, <laughs> you're dead. You're like, but I just... With my cards. <laughs> Dang it. So definitely, um, you can cast it on their end step to replicate the ability of Tooth and Nail to get him directly to the battlefield. Mm-hmm. Make it a little bit easier. Definitely. And like the cons here, it doesn't put them directly onto the battlefield. Like we said, we can kind of mitigate that with the way you play it and your timing. Mm-hmm. So honestly, I I love shared summons. I would, I'd probably play that over Tooth and Nail in most respects. All right, and that's going to bring us our next card here with Cryptolith Rite. It's currently clocking in at $16.74 for our cheapest version. And we have our budget replacement only costs 36 cents. <laughs> Coming in, I'm going to butcher this name, but it's I'm assuming it's pronounced Yang Yangu Wild Crafter. It's one of those uncommon War of the Spark Planeswalkers with a, a passive ability of each creature you control with a plus and plus one counter on it. Has, tap, add one mana of any color. You can minus one loyalty counter to put a plus plus one counter on target creature. Enters with three loyalty counters for only three mana, two and a green. Pros here is it's a lot cheaper. Yep, that's your wallet. (laughs) There you go. There are the pros. You're welcome. In every (laughs) regard, as far as playing goes, Crypto the Right is a strictly better card. Way better. Yeah. If you want to save 16 bucks. We recommend this little planeswalker here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's super common now to have some sort of plus one plus one. Yeah, they're all over counter the place. target thing in your in your commander deck, especially so. if you're running green. And so it's gonna be common that your creatures you're playing are gonna have some sort of counter or some sort of ability that causes them to get counters, or your commander's gonna give them counters, different things. So it's not just gonna be the two creatures that you're mm-hmm. able to put a, a counter on from Jung Young Yu, um, which is very helpful. Definitely. So that's, def- that's one of the cons here is that it just can't yep. slip into any deck like Cryptolith right can. Mm-hmm. You have to be conscientious about how you do that. And it does cost one more mana. It's two and a green rather than one and a green like Cryptolith right. Yeah. And if somehow your plus plus one counters are removed from your creatures, it's also going to negate the ability. And it is a lot easier to remove our Planeswalker than it is to remove Cryptolith Ride. Because every creature on the battlefield says, tap, destroy Arya's Planeswalker. Oh, absolutely. Especially when your Planeswalker starts out as a three. Yeah. With no way to get (laughs) higher than a three. And you're most likely going to get him just down to one and then just have him chill hiding, you know, in that back corner. But he can can play more like a ritual effect, though. So you slap them down when you have plenty of creatures with plus and plus one counters on them. Allow them to tab, add a ton of mana for a really explosive turn. That's, That's probably point. the best way to play him. Oh, yeah. So. And then just kind of let him sit there. Yeah. So that's our option for Cryptolith right here. And that's going to lead us into our final card. Which is Phyrexian Arena. Clocking in at $12.29. Our budget card is Underworld Connections. It is a three mana card it's a land enchantment right it enchants a land sorry and that land essentially says tap pay a life draw a card Phyrex and arena on the other hand does not let you choose when to lose that life and when not to yep that's an upkeep trigger and yep. you don't have any control when that happens nope but underworld connections offers that flexibility huge huge help so you can tab it on an opponent's turn, mm-hmm. on your end step, on your opponent's end step. Mm-hmm. You're not restricted to just a upkeep trigger there. Which is super nice because, I mean, you're still only getting to draw an extra card one turn. But you can play it instantly compared to the Fire Axe Arena where you play it and then you have to wait until your next turn before you use it. Definitely. There's a lot of criticisms against Phyrexian Arena, and the big one is that it's essentially a pay three mana pass card. It doesn't do anything for full turn rotation. Nope. On the Wood Connections, however, you can slap it down and immediately draw a card the turn it comes into play, so long as you have an untapped land for it to enchant. Mm-hmm. So. Yep, super helpful. And I personally prefer the Underworld Connection because I don't like being late game and having to find 
a destroy target enchantment card to destroy my own enchantment so that I don't kill myself, essentially. <laughs> yep. That's the worst, because you have this great card that says, hey, destroy target enchantment, and Cal's over here with just some stupid thing that's making me... I, don't I have know. lots of stupid things. He does. He has lots of stupid cards. Um, but, you know, some enchantment that's making me lose an extra life every time I draw another card or something. And I want to get rid of it, but I have to get rid of my Fire Axe Arena first because I only have three life left. And if I have... That gives me three more turns at the very maximum. So, yeah. so Underworld Connections allows that flexibility that if you're getting low in the life department, you don't you have to tap it. tap it don't as a mana. It. Use it for mana instead yeah, still, and just kind of chill. Your land still works. Yep, still so. works as land, which is super helpful. The cons here, though, is that essentially it reads that you have to pay a mana for every card you draw. Yep, it so. does take away that one mana if you're wanting to use it as an extra draw yeah. card. For yeah. Rexian Arena, get you that card for free, get you that draw a card for free. free on the world connections does cost that mana yep. so but between the two of them honestly i do prefer the underworld connections mm -hmm. so and at 23 cents less than a quarter like <laughs> sign me up why wouldn't you it gives you that flexibility and yep. makes it a little bit easier to play so Definitely. all righty well that brings us to the conclusion of our cards here sure. let us know what you think Give us some thoughts in the comments. Let us know if we missed anything. Offer up some of the, your own budget replacements you guys have found. So there are plenty of them out there. Yep, and if we choose yours, we might feature give you a video. little shout out too as we <laughs> feature them. Hey, this guy mentioned this card. We're going to bring it up. Yeah. So there's always a budget option wherever you look. Praise Asmore. Bon appetit.